Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a really cool project to show you guys, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero USB dongle. Not only is this a computer in your pocket, you could also share the internet from your PC to this little device. So let's get started. So guys, here I managed to desolder a male head from a USB device that I had. From here, you would take a serial device or serial wires and then I just chopped it up and I'm using that for wires. Now here, you would solder the male head to the, U to the Raspberry Pi itself and I'll leave a diagram in the descriptions below. Now next, I would place the electrical wiring tape so it won't short out anything. Now I managed to print out a shell for the USB dongle. Let me know if you guys want me to sell this online or something like that, uh, but it is on Thingiverse. Now after that, once everything is all fitted, glue everything together, then screw everything together. Alright, so assuming that you have the SD card written already with the Raspberry Pixel image, the first thing we need to do is actually go into the boot drive of the SD card and modify the config.txt. So here, Scroll down to the bottom and you want to add this line, DT overlay equals DWC2, which will actually allow you to load modules. Now the next thing you have to do is go over to commandline.txt and edit that. Now scroll over to where it says root weight. Right after root weight, you want to add this line, modules dash load equals DWC2 comma G underscore ether which will turn our little Raspberry Pi device into a RNDIS uh, modem. So you might be familiar with that if you use the Android um, tethering, USB tethering, because that turns it into a modem too. But that's the mode we're actually going to be setting our Raspberry Pi into. Once you're done with this, save it, close it, and then you can stick the SD card into your Raspberry Pi Zero. So as soon as you stick the Raspberry Pi device in, you should see device setup. It's actually going to try to install the RNDIS gadget. As soon as that's done, if you want to verify, you can actually right click, go to device manager. Most modern operating systems already have the drivers uh, in the system, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to check, you will see that RNDIS gadget is available. Once that's done, that means it's loaded, it detects your Raspberry Pi, and you could actually go into it. Now, to go into your Raspberry Pi, you would need PuTTY or SSH equivalent uh, software, and you would have to type in raspberrypi.local at port 22. Then you would just log into your Raspberry Pi like normal. Pi Raspberry and there we have it. We're able to connect to our device just through the USB port. Now, if you're going to notice, if I go ping, it doesn't allow me to ping because there's no internet. So the first thing we want to get set up is to allow the internet to be shared to our device. So to do that, you want to right click on your network device, go to adapter settings, and find the device that you are currently using. So for me, I'll be using Wi-Fi. So I'll right click that and go to Properties. And remember that Raspberry Pi device is called Ethernet 4. You can see it right up here on top where my mouse is. So head over to Sharing and it says Allow Other Network to Connect to This Device. And then you want to select Ethernet 4. Once you hit OK, it's going to set up all the parameters to allow it to share to Ethernet 4. Now, it's not going to work right away on your Raspberry Pi. You do have to force a reboot on your Raspberry Pi to start the internet to work. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is sudo raspi config. And I actually want to enable VNC settings. So I could actually use the desktop on my Raspberry Pi Zero. So to do that, you would go over to the advanced options, scroll down to VNC, and then here, would you like to enable VNC? You would say yes. It's going to do its thing to enable that, and then do the reboot on the Raspberry Pi Zero. sudo reboot. Now it's going to close my connection. You could just restart the same session that we just had. Pi. Raspberry, 
and log back in. Let me clear this screen. Now we could ping google.com and you're gonna see you're getting a response. Now, since we enabled VNC setting, we could actually log into our VNC desktop. So to do that, we could open up VNC and type in raspberry pi.local on the VNC server. And the username and password is pi and raspberry, or unless you changed it. And here we have it, our desktop, right to our local Raspberry Pi Zero USB dongle. Now, if you want to play around with the settings a bit, you could actually go to config.txt and change the resolution if you want a bigger resolution. But you could use this just like a normal desktop, and now you have access to it. You could install other protocols other than using VNC. You could actually install XRDP. It's up to you. So here are some of the applications I already installed on my Raspberry Pi USB dongle. One is I created a start page that will navigate me over to some of the applications I, I already installed on the Raspberry Pi. So one is Webmin. If you don't know what that is, you can check out one of my other videos. I'll leave a link above. Webmin allows me to, like I said, control my Raspberry Pi. I could shut down, uh, do system updates, reboot the device. I could even install cron jobs and everything. And it allows me to see my system stats on my Raspberry Pi, how much space I have, all, all the stuff that um, required for our system administrator. This way it allows me to control my Pi without having to actually terminal into my Pi or SSH into my Pi. The next application I installed was Own Cloud. Basically it's like a Dropbox, but locally installed onto my Raspberry Pi and it worked just the same way. I could upload, download files, edit files um, right onto my own cloud as if it was like a Dropbox itself. Anyway, I'll talk about own cloud on its own episode if you guys are interested, but in the meantime, it works very well. A little sluggish on the Pi, but it does work. So thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A couple of things that I did like about this project is that you do not lose any functions from this Raspberry Pi Zero. You could still plug in all the stuff that you normally would and use this as a normal device. You could also install a lot more applications to this like a web server or something like that so you could connect to it. Even if it doesn't have internet, you could still use it like a mass storage device. If you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button on this channel. That way it helps me a lot. Also gives you notification when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts cryptic text that you would normally see when you're booting up the Raspberry Pi in favor of a splash screen, which is a lot prettier. And you could also now enable login prompts, so I don't have